Hello Booktube! Welcome back to All the Worlds a Page. My name is Janelle and today I'm going to be talking about The Red Tent by Anita Diamant. Now this book was really popular about 10 years ago. It became a New York Times bestseller and it's about uh, Dina who is the only daughter of Jacob, um, Jacob from the Bible, and it basically reinvents her tale and puts it in a, gives her more autonomy, puts it within a much more um, individualistic perspective and um, it's really fascinating. What's really interesting about this book is not just the narrative itself but how it um, forces us to reconsider everything we've been told about the Bible and everything we've been told about biblical narratives and biblical stories and ask, ask us to reconsider if that's what really happened or if there are facts that were omitted and if there are other perspectives to be considered. And that's what I really appreciated the most about this book. So before I get into what happens within this specific story, um, I think it's important to talk about what happens in the biblical version of Dina. Um, I think it's important to talk about what happens biblically to Dina, and that is that um, she is only mentioned twice. Once is when she was born, and the second time is when she was a young woman, and that story is quite tragic. So she was um, living with her family um, and camped in the Fertile Valley, and she was seen by a prince of a nearby city, and uh, that city was called Shechem. The prince was named Shalem, and he saw her and saw that she was very beautiful, and he um, basically, according to the Bible, he kidnapped her, abducted her, and raped her. And he fell so madly in love with her that he um, asked Jacob, her father, for permission to marry her. And, um, and Jacob was reluctant because um, because Shalem was not um, of his faith and did not worship the same God that J Jacob did. And so um, Simeon and Levi counseled his, who were his, uh, two of his sons. Simeon and Levi counseled him and said, why don't you ask that he be circumcised along with all the other men of his city? That way they will become members of our faith. And so um, Shalem agreed because he was so in love with Dina. And um, on the third day after the circumcision, Simeon and Levi went into the city, slaughtered every man um, while they were still recovering, and took Dina back. And Dina is never mentioned again. We hear so much about, about um, all the other sons, all the other children of Jacob, uh, who are all sons. We hear about their children and their stories, and about Joseph and Reuben and um, and Issachar and Dan and we don't hear about Dina. Uh, she just basically fades from the Bible and she fades from history. And so this is Anita Diamond giving her story a lot more, um, um, giving her a lot more autonomy within her story and giving her, um, and really trying to elaborate and see what could have really happened. And I think it's really fascinating because in this story, Dina, it begins not with Dina's story, but with her mother's story and with her aunt and um, and other mother, Rachel. Um, so in the Bible, um, Rachel had, or not Rachel, Jacob had four wives, uh, Leah, Rachel, Zilpah, and Billa. And uh, Leah and Rachel were sisters, and um, Leah was the first wife. Uh, and there's a whole story that I won't get into that, but um, if you're curious, look it up. I'm sure you'll be able to find it somewhere on the internet. Um, or read the book. <laughs> and um, it begins with their stories because um, it's, a, it's as much a myth as it is a novel. It reads like a myth. It reads, um, it just slides so smoothly from event to event, major life event to major life event. It just slips like water. It, um, it covers births and deaths and marriage and intimacy and it's just, um, it's really beautifully done. It's so um, enrapturing. And so by the time we get to Dina's story, we really have a history of the family. We have a history of Jacob and how we know, we know how he ran away from his family. We know how, um, he, how he fell in love with Rachel, but he, um, but he ended up married to Leah at first and he had to work, um, work for her father um, for another seven years to earn Rachel's hand. Um, we know so much about the family history and folklore. And so, but for us, so many of us, the story is so familiar, and yet Diamond puts such a unique spin on it because um, 
in the story, there's so many pagan influences. Um, Diamond, in her in her story, uh, Leah and Rachel and Zilpah and Billa, they do not worship Jacob's God. They worship uh, the household gods of Laban, uh, who was their father. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and that's um, something that a lot of people have said, well, that's not accurate, that's not, that's not accurate, that's not how it really was. Um, but is it? Because uh, biblically, there's even a verse how um, Rachel, when um, they were uh, leaving their father's household, um, she stole Laban's gods and hid them in her saddle. And so it's, um, um, so it's entirely plausible that, um, that Rachel didn't worship Jacob's God, because why else would she have stolen her father's household gods to worship? I mean, it's just, um, and even though I grew up very Christian, this is something that was never really addressed in, um, in any sermons or anything like that, so I just never, um, so I just assumed, I don't know, I just never really thought about it. The book is called The Red Tent because the red tent is where all the women go when they're menstruating, and so um, it's a place where they gather to tell stories and to um, sing songs and to be near one another, and basically it's like a safe place of refuge in a world of patriarchy and men and... Um, and it's a place where Dina wants to be and it's a place where she feels at home and a place where she has fond memories of when after she leaves and um, it's just a central pivotal place and the red tent is almost a character itself um, because it's not um, because it's not just a place it's um, it's an event um, And in this story, Dina wasn't raped. Dina had consensual sex with Shalem, and she wanted to marry him as much as he wanted to marry her. And I think that's a really intriguing perspective to take, and it's um, not one that, <clears throat> that necessarily isn't possible, um, because... Um, because in biblical times, rape wasn't something that happened to you. Rape was something that happened to your father or your guardian or whoever was in charge of your welfare. Um, and it was up to him to decide whether or not you were raped. Um, because you did not have autonomy over your own body. You belonged to someone else. Um, and so if you, were, if you were actually raped, it was a crime against your father um, for damaging his property. And so... In this instance, it's entirely plausible that Dina did really love Shalem and that she wanted to be with him and that her family was just unwilling to accept that and so they wrote it off as rape. Um, and this story gives Dina so much more autonomy and so much more, um, and gives her so much, and gives her so much more power over her own story. Um, and that's just so refreshing to read. And I've read a lot of um, reviews, and a lot of people have said, like, the men in the story are all simplistic, they're all one-dimensional, they're all evil or sex-crazed or lots of different things. And I think that's not really, first of all, I disagree with that, but even if that's true, I think that just kind of shows how this story is basically like a biblical story, but in reverse, because in the Bible, it's the women who are all one-dimensional or sex-crazed or evil or... Um, or, um, or inhabited by Satan. And so it's almost, um, and it's myth-like quality, it's, re it's reversing the narrative and it's telling us about um, how um, in this story women are allowed to be people and are allowed to be individuals and are allowed to be, um, um, and allowed to have um, fully fleshed out unique, um, full-bodied lives. So I really enjoyed this book. This is the second time that I've read it. Um, I was in a bit of a reading slump, so I picked up something that I knew that I would enjoy. Um, this time it didn't hold up quite as much as it used to. Um, it, um, I gave it three out of five stars as opposed to four stars last time. And, um, 
part of the reason why, because, like, um, in its myth-like quality, it just, it tells a lot about, like, birth after birth after birth, death after death, and I kind of felt like, I need you to pull another rabbit out of that hat, I need some, uh, some other, like, events to happen here, <laughs> okay, Diamond, um, but I really did enjoy it, and I, um, and it's a book that I, I'm sure I will read again. Um, there is also a movie or a mini series or something like that out there, so if you're interested in that, check it out. But um, I think um, it's really intriguing, not just be because of the novel itself, but because of what it does for us, and it challenges us to rethink biblical stories. And I think that's very important, and I'm really appreciative to it for that. And at the end of the day, this book gives women's voices a place to be heard and that's why it's so important and that's why I'm glad I read it.